Hi, I'm Natalie Ledwell. Now in this episode of Manifesting with the Masters, I'll be speaking with one of the world's leading experts on happiness, success and unconditional love, number one best-selling New York Times author, Marcy Shymoff. Now you may recognize her from the book or the hit movie, The Secret. Now she's the author of Happy for No Reason and Love for No Reason. And she's also the female face of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. Now in this video, Marcy reveals her powerful three-step formula for attracting abundance into your life, including the final most powerful step to manifesting your dreams and desires that most people forget. So enjoy. Now today, I have a very special guest with me. Now this lady is actually the best-selling non-fiction women's author. Uh, she's a New York Times bestseller. She co-authored six of the Chicken Soup of the Soul books. She has two books of her own, uh, Love for No Reason and Happy for No Reason. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Marcy Shymoff. Great to be here with you, Natalie. Now, uh, Marcy, I actually um, uh, am going to ask you five questions. Okay. Um, these are going to be the five questions that I ask all of my guests. And um, we're really interested to hear that your take on the, and, and the answers for these. Okay, they're not true or false questions, huh? Not true or false. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so the first question is, um, is you know, I, I noticed that you're someone who actually lives their life with passion. Now, has it always been that way for you? And what, what is your background before, before this? Oh, well, I, I have to say I was very fortunate in that when I was 13 years old, I found out what I wanted to do with my life. I was 13 years old and I saw my first professional speaker. It was 1971, which make, a lot of you are doing quick math. I'm in my 50s. <laughs> 1971, and I went to see Zig Ziglar speak. And perhaps you've heard of Zig Ziglar. He's certainly a classic, amazing man. And I saw him inspiring a whole room full of people, and I said, that's what I'm here to do with my life. I knew immediately. I went home and told my parents that I've I decided what I wanted to be when I grew up, and it was a professional speaker, a motivational speaker, and they had no idea what I was talking about because that profession didn't exist. They were very disappointed. They wanted me to be a dental hygienist because my dad was a dentist. But my mom teased me. She said, honey, you sure talk enough. You might as well get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a vision early on, but there were lots and lots of obstacles. Back in those days, it wasn't a profession. There was nothing I could do to study to become a professional speaker. So I did the closest thing I knew how to do, which was I got an MBA in training and development. And I started my career by teaching business writing courses in Fortune 500 companies. I hated business writing, yeah. but it was the only job I could find. And I, I had to teach five-day business writing classes where we'd focus on where to put commas and semicolons and how to edit things. And I thought, this is, this is torturous. It felt torturous. But at the time, inside, I felt like, well, there must be some reason for this. But I had no idea what the reason was. And the reason was revealed a number of years later when I ended up uh, writing the Chicken Soup for the Soul books and discovering that every skill that I needed that uh, in order to be a good Chicken Soup for the Soul editor or co-author, I had honed during those years teaching business writing. Yeah, I so, find that as well. I mean, that kind of leads into my next question, because yeah. often it's fine threads that, that, that lead us to our passion or mm -hmm. to what it is that we end up doing. You know, what happened with you to, to get you from the job that you hated yeah. into doing what you love now? Well, I, let me share with you a formula that I learned from one of my first life coaches, a man named Bill Levesey. And it's a formula of, I believe, the law of attraction formula for me. It's what, what's always been the formula I've used to manifest things in my life. And it's three steps. They are intention, attention, and no tension. Now, everybody's familiar with the intention step. Be clear about what it is you want to create. Most people are clear about the attention step. Put your attention, your thoughts, your words, your feelings, and your actions behind your intention. But what people aren't so clear about is the no tension step. No tension means let go, relax, be in an inner state of peace and happiness. And that's when things happen. When you're holding on too tight, they don't happen. And that's what I found in my own life. So what was happening to me was, I was clear on my vision, I wanted to be a professional speaker. I wanted to, my, ultimately my goal was to help influence uh, 
millions of people's lives, to truly help them lead better lives. So that was clear. I had put a lot of attention on that through many years of, of focusing on that, trying to, trying to really get as far as I could in my career. But I hadn't done the no tension step. I had a lot of stress behind that efforting. I was efforting and efforting. Until one day, a very dear friend of mine, who you know, Janet Atwood, took me aside and said, Marcy, you're hitting your head against the wall. You're not, you're not progressing right now because you are too stressed out. And she said, I'm taking you away on a seven day silent meditation retreat. Now, I had not been silent for more than two hours before that <laughs> in my life, so this was not an easy thing to do. But I went away with her, and on the fourth day of silence, in the middle of one of my meditations, a light bulb went off in my head, and I saw the words, chicken soup for the woman's soul. Now, no one had thought of any of the specialty chicken soup for the soul books before. Jack Canfield had been my mentor in the area of self-esteem, but the only book that was out was the original Chicken Soup for the Soul book. And as soon as I saw that light bulb in my head and I saw those words, Chicken Soup for the Woman's Soul, I knew that was it. I knew that that was going to be the thing that would propel me to my next step. There was only one problem, and the problem was that I still had three more days of silence. <laughs> I had just had the great Torture. epiphany of my life and I couldn't tell anybody about it. But as soon as the silence was over, I, I ran to the closest payphone and I called up Jack and I said, I've got it, chicken soup for the woman's soul. And he said, oh my God, I can't believe nobody's thought of it. And he called up the publisher and the publisher said, great idea. And that was that. And, and a year later, I had my first book, Chicken Soup for the Woman's Soul, came out and it w went to number one that week on the New York Times bestseller list. But I absolutely know that it wouldn't have happened had I not done that step of no tension. Yeah. So, so that whole formula for people, atten intention, attention, and no tension, we need all three of those. I know, because it's hard success. when you're in it, when you're actually in the, the stress of, of everything and in the situation to be able to step outside of it. So that's, that's fantastic yeah. advice. Now, I know that um, from experience, that um, success is not, it's not an easy ride. There are, there are things that you need to do. Uh, there are, you know, maybe habits or, or things that you do day to day that actually keep you focused and keep you on track. What are some of the things that you do day to day? It is only the day to day habits that really matter because our day to day habits make up what our life is. Mm -hmm. And so I have, what I try to do is introduce a new habit a week into my life. Okay. Um, sometimes it uh, takes a couple weeks for a new habit to take hold. So a week to three weeks, I would say. And some of the things that I do um, are, are to take care of my body. I mean, I really do my best to take care of my body. I do a, an Ayurvedic um, health treatment, which is based on, on uh, Vedic or Indian um, form of medicine, East Indian medicine. I wake up in the morning and I do something called an Abhyanga, which is an Ayurvedic massage, oil massage that I do before I take my shower. I meditate every day. I, um, I focus on gratitude as much as possible. I surround myself with wonderful, positive people. I've been in, a ma in various mastermind groups and support groups for the last 25 years. Um, exercise for me is a very big deal. I think that at different times in people's lives they, that we need different things and to focus on different things. But I really believe in a holistic approach to, uh, to living our best life. Yeah. And uh, I think it has to do with mind, body, heart, soul, our relationships, our living our passion, living our purpose and taking responsibility for our lives. So those seven areas are the areas that I focus on. Absolutely, especially when it comes to health. Like all the money in the world is worth nothing if you don't have the health to enjoy it. Absolutely. Really. So now I often get a lot of emails, which I'm sure that you can relate to this as well, of people asking what to do um, when they're faced with adversity. Mm. For, for example, when people, they find it hard to visualize abundance when they can't pay their bills. Right. So what kind of advice do you have for, for those people? Well, first of all, that is the most important time. Mm. When you are experiencing the lack, that is the time when you need to be focusing on this, the, the abundance, the situation that you, that you would like to create. And to really, gratitude, I believe, is the fast track to happiness. It's the fast track to success. If you focus on what it is that you already have, that will grow, you know, what we put our attention on grows stronger in our life. So if you are challenged by health, I want you to focus on every bit of appreciation you have for the health that you do currently have. 
If you're challenged right now by finances, by lack in your finances, I want you to focus on appreciating every bit of financial abundance that you currently have. Same with relationships. If you're having challenges in your relationships, make a list of all the ways that you feel supported in your relationships and all the way that your, ways that your relationships are working. So by focusing on, you know, what we appreciate appreciates in life, what we appreciate grows. And that, that to me is, is key number one. Absolutely. I love that advice. Now, I know it's going to be very difficult to narrow down, this down to just one, but if you could give people listening today uh, one actionable step that they could take to make a difference in their life today, what would that one step be? Okay, in addition to gratitude, yes, <laughs> um, I would say there is one other fast track to greater openness of heart, greater love, and greater happiness in life, which is ultimately what we all want. We all want more love, more happiness. That's the purpose of our life. So one of the most important keys to that is forgiveness. We cannot live a life of open-hearted flow and love when we are holding on to anger and resentment and grudges. So one of my favorite techniques that I use a lot every day is a technique called Ho'oponopono. Now, the good news is that it's a lot easier to do than it is to say. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Ho'oponopono is based on a Kahuna Hawaiian tradition of forgiveness or mending. And it's very simply four phrases. If you have a piece of paper and a pen, I want you to write down these four phrases. They are, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. And in any order, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. And what you do is you have in mind the situation or the person with whom you're having a hard time forgiving. And we all have these situations where we just, you, just, you know, there's that block in your heart. And I want you to spend five minutes closing your eyes and feeling those four phrases towards the person that you are having the trouble with. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And it doesn't matter whose, quote, fault it is. In your heart, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. And then spend a few minutes feeling that towards yourself as well. If you do that five, seven minutes a day for the next week or two weeks, I guarantee you, you will experience a shift in your life. So use your own life as an experiment and just try it. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Manifesting with the Masters. If you enjoyed this video, please share the love by clicking on the Facebook, Twitter or email buttons below. Or please join the conversation by sharing what insights you learned from this video by leaving a comment below as well. I would absolutely love to hear from you. So until next time, remember to live large, choose courageously and love without limits. We'll see you soon.